Welcome to worship at Russellville First United Methodist Church on this Palm Sunday. My name is Cindy Bride, and I am the pastor to youth and families here in this wonderful congregation. And on behalf of Pastor Tony, Pastor Sarah, and the rest of the staff, we are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. And although we are not meeting together in person, we hope that you are finding other ways to stay connected. We encourage you to check your emails regularly and our social media pages as well. The church, the children, and the youth ministries all have Facebook pages, which are updated regularly with all kinds of information and resources for you. We hope you have also found our Faith at Home tab on the church website. That's at russellvillefirst.org. There you will find resources for all ages, including lessons for children and youth, Pastor Tony's By Water and the Spirit Core class, and Pastor Sarah's Wednesday night class as well. We hope that you will also enjoy, join us this week for our Holy Week observances. On Monday, Thursday, we'll have the Living Lord's Supper, a drama put together by our children. You can find that on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and through our church website. And then on Friday, we'll have a live streamed Good Friday service at 6 p.m. also through our Facebook page. And then finally, we hope you will join us again next Sunday, Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of our risen Savior. That will be 8.30 again next Sunday morning. While we may not be together in body, we are joined in spirit here at Russellville First, where we seek to make disciples who love God and who love others. I invite you into worship this morning as we begin this Holy Week. Listen, look up, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to the hillsides where people listen. Jesus is coming to the sick rooms where people suffer. Jesus is coming to hearts that are open to him. And today we join the crowds of long ago shouting Hosanna as we meet Jesus in worship. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, as we remember how Christ the King entered Jerusalem to the sound of joyful shouts, we are in a time when it seems that reasons to shout with joy may be few and far between, and yet here you come, entering into our lives when we need you the most. Maybe in ways we don't expect, but you are here just the same. Increase our faith so that we might praise you every day, beginning with this time of worship. We ask it in the name of the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Let us enter into worship as Brian Faulkner and Steve Smith lead us in a time of music. Life and voice 
have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named Sacrifice the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in his precious blood. Christ the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God. Good morning. My name is Paige Phillips, and I'm the director of children's ministries here at Russell First. Um, and as Pastor Cindy said, we um, like to think of ourselves not just as in ministry for children and youth, but for families. So this is a part of our service that's um, for you, our families. So I want to talk to you about something that I used to do with our family, with our children. Um, when I was reading a chapter book with them at night, before I would start on the new chapter, I would say, let's look back at what was happening before. Can you tell me what was going on before? Our, our daughter Molly especially loved that part, and if I forgot to say it, she would be like, wait, 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 I want to tell you what was, what was going on. Um, so we would look back and think what, what was going on, what was happening in the story. And then after we had read the chapter, I would say, so now, what do you think is going to happen next? You know, what, what do you imagine or what do you think is going to happen next? Well, as I was studying and reading the scripture, it made me, for today, it made me think of doing that. Because our, our story today, our scripture today, and it's found in all four Gospels, um, but we're looking at the one in Matthew so from Matthew 21, our story today is full of praise of Jesus, and they're so excited, and they're waving their palm branches and saying Hosanna, which means save us, and so they're, they're all caught up in this moment and this excitement. But when we look back at what had been happening, happening in the scriptures, um, we see that Jesus was uh, teaching them, the, his followers, his disciples, and, and sharing with them. And he was performing miracles. You know, last week we saw Lazarus was uh, brought back from, from death. But um, particularly in Matthew, it even says that Jesus stopped and was like, remember, I'm going to die. And they still just weren't quite getting the whole picture. Right, um, but when we get to the the end of the story today, if we get to the end of, of Palm Sunday, and if I was to ask if the children were here, and I was to say, but what happens next? 
we would probably jump to Easter and say, he's risen, and, and there's, there's all this joy. But uh, my hope and my uh, challenge for you this week, you have, I think, probably a little bit more time with your family, is to really dig in to that scripture um, and to see what happens between the Hosanna today in the scripture and the hallelujah of Easter. And when you do that, when you look at what Jesus did and what him saving us really means, I think our joy and our praise next week will be that much greater. Um, Will you please pray with me? Dear Jesus, we praise you as our Savior, uh, the one who deserves all our praise. And we thank you, Lord, for your word and for um, just the gift that you are to us. And we ask, Lord, that you please help us um, to read your word and to know you and to just praise you every day in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Tony Griffin, and I'm senior pastor, and we want to welcome you to worship. It is our joy to worship with you this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Katie Hindshaw tells of meeting a pastor of St. Nicholas Church in Leipzig in what used to be East Germany. During the Cold War, East Germans knew their country lay directly in the path of potential nuclear crossfire. The people were so powerless, they did a crazy and ridiculous thing. They decided to go to church and pray. That's where St. Nicholas Church comes in. On Monday evenings, a small group of people, usually no more than ten, would gather in the church to pray for peace. Government officials took notice. They infiltrated prayer meetings and looked for signs of revolution. The pastor told Shaw that he was careful to cut the microphone off if things got a bit too political. He didn't want the church to get fined or to be shut down. When some prayer group members applied for permission to relocate to West Germany, officials quickly granted the request, glad to be rid of a few malcontents. But the plan backfired when the word spread of this new way to immigrate. Tens and then hundreds and finally more than a thousand people started attending weekly prayer meetings, not just at St. Nicholas Church, but in churches throughout Leipzig. 
it became a movement too big to ignore. In October of 1989, word came down from Moscow, the peace prayer meetings must be stopped. Troops from other states were sent to Leipzig to make sure that the local troops, if they were called on to shoot, would be able to shoot. Leipzig school children were told by their teachers not to go to the prayer meeting on October 9th, and the pastor's wife begged him to stay home. But he did something else instead. He asked people to come to the prayer meeting not with weapons or gas masks, but with candles instead. People thought he was crazy. What good could candles do against the might of the Soviet army? This doesn't sound like the makings of a revolution, does it? Nor did Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem look that triumphal. But scholars tell us that the crowds with Jesus function as a character in the Gospel of Matthew. They represent disciples in mass. So think back to the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. These ragtag followers start following Jesus around, gathering around him. And by the end of the Sermon on the Mount, they're not just following him, they're listening to him. The story says they're astounded at his authority. They, they see him heal the sick and cast out demons. And they begin to wonder, might this be the son of David? Might he truly be the Messiah? So here's this group taken by the presence of Jesus. Who now have had their bellies filled twice with just a few loaves and fishes. And they're riding high as they enter Jerusalem. Matthew makes clear the, significant of this, the significance of this event, having Jesus start at the Mount of Olives. Because we know in the Old Testament account, in the prophecy about the coming Messiah, that he would come from the Mount of Olives. So who is this Jesus? Matthew wants to be sure that we know he's the son of David, he's the Messiah, he's the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. The whole city is in turmoil. And the Greek word for turmoil is a strong word. It's, it's the root word for seismic. In other words, this is a cosmic event. The late Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan in their book, The Last Week, what the, the, the Gospels really teach about Jesus' final days in Jerusalem, they use some historical reconstruction and imagination to paint a powerful scene. It's a beautiful scene. It's an amazing scene. It's a scene on year 30 in Jerusalem on that day. And there are two processions. One's composed mostly of peasants following this certain Jesus from Galilee, riding a donkey down from the Mount of Olives. And on the opposite side of the city, on a war horse, at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers, is the, the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. You see, he's come to maintain order and control. He's come because something might happen during this Jewish festival of the Passover. There's the expectation that there may be turmoil with all of these pilgrims coming to town. This is a clash of cosmic proportion. But not anyone would have expected a war horse versus a donkey. This passage is full of paradox. Not just a war horse versus a donkey, but think about some of the twos in the, the passage. Some of the pairs, two disciples to secure two animals for Jesus' journey. Jesus can only ride one animal, right? But they go to get a donkey and it's colt. Jerusalem is at once a holy city, but it's also a city that kills its prophets, the scripture says. The wonderful writer Tom Long says that in all of this, Matthew is seeking to convey the two natures of Christ, fully human and fully divine. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, if Christ is not fully human, how can he save us? If Christ is not fully divine, how can he save us? Indeed, Matthew wants us to make no mistake in this regard that Jesus is both. He is fully human and fully divine. He is indeed the Messiah. And his power is not at all what the culture expected. In fact, it threatens the established order. 
One might expect for us today that the church would be impotent during a time of pandemic. How can the church be the church during a time like this? Because our power is in our gathering, right? Surely the church of Jesus Christ is powerful. But our physical distance does not negate God's power in the world through us. In fact, it's in times like these that the church of Jesus Christ shines as the people of God are called to extend the love of God through Jesus Christ in new and different ways. These are times that call us to listen closely for God's call as to how to rise to the occasion and spread the love of God in Jesus Christ. That love is countercultural. That love is earth-shaking. It's cosmic. The very nature of the love of God in Jesus Christ is such that when all forces are turned against it, it does not stop. It goes to the cross, the most powerful symbol of God's self-giving love in Jesus Christ. As the people cried out, Hosanna, which as Paige told us literally means, God save us. The people would have never dreamed that salvation comes through a cross. No, that's not the kind of leader they expected. That's not the kind of victory they were looking for. But people like Mother Teresa, people like Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, Desmond Tutu, Oscar Romero, and the list goes on and on. People like me and you, oh, that we would find it to be so true for us today as well, that the love of God goes through a cross. The love of God is unstoppable, especially in times like these, as we tune our ears, as we tune our hearts to the the call that God has placed upon us to be the church of Jesus Christ in this time. You see, church, we have a singular opportunity in the midst of crisis to show that God has not left us nor forsaken us, nor will he ever leave us or forsake us. Indeed, he walks with us and calls us into this canotic, in other words, this self-emptying enterprise of the expansion of God's kingdom in the world through the people of God, the church, the ecclesia, the called out, me and you, God's called out people who love like Jesus Christ. Christ loves and gives, and they will not stop. What happened that evening at that meeting in Leipzig on Monday, October 9th, 1989? No one knew what to expect. Would anyone show up to pray in the, in the midst of soldiers? Would the prayers of peace be stopped? Would there be violence? People started arriving. In twos and threes, in tens and twenties, until 70,000 people turned out to pray. Their refrain We are the people, no violence, come join us. They say the army commander called Moscow but got no response. When the people spilled out into the Leipzig streets, candles in hand, the troops unexpectedly stood down. And while the Berlin Wall would fall some weeks later, people say that freedom came to Germany that night through prayer in Leipzig. Thanks to some peaceful people carrying nothing more than candles, hoping for nothing more than mercy. Of course, it doesn't always happen that way, does it? Peace has its price. Salvation has a cross. Around that same time, tanks mowed down peaceful protesters in Tiananmen Square, and revolutionary movements in Czechoslovakia and Romania ended in blood. The Palm Sunday protesters know well Their appeal is not to temple priests. It's not to Roman officials or centurion soldiers. They appeal to Jesus, the son of David, to hear their hosannas and have mercy on them. The psalmist reminds us God's mercy endures forever. We do well to remember these things when we proclaim our hosannas. And I love what What Shaw says, she says, tree branches and candles are no match for the powers of this world, but the powers of this world are no match for the powers of God. 
in Leipzig in the square outside St. Nicholas Church. There's a replica of one of the church's iconic pillars. On its base, there's an inscription commemorating the events of October 9th, and it reads, The day the church came out into the world. It need not be just one day, church. Palm Sunday calls us to join God's work outside the church's walls in new and different ways, relying not on the power of what we hold in our hands, but solely on the one who holds us. He calls us to be the church. No pandemic can stop us from being the church. No pandemic can can keep the the Holy Spirit of God from doing what God's will in us and through us if we listen for that will. And if we do not cower down, but we join that triumphal procession. But you notice they peel off, right? Today we cry, Hosanna. Hosanna. Save us, save us. And he can and he will, but the journey doesn't stop there. The crowd will flip on him. Because of the most unexpected thing that happens, the journey of salvation goes through a cross. The work of the church of Jesus Christ goes through a cross. Do not be deterred. Do not stop listening. Do not stop looking. Do not stop moving at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to do His will in this time, in this place. It may not look like it's looked in the past, but the power of the Holy Spirit is the same now as it was then and promises to see us through as the kingdom comes in the fullness of God's power in Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. Do not peel off from the procession entering the the city of Jerusalem. Do not peel off from the power of the church at work in the world today. The journey of salvation goes through a cross. Don't run. Don't hide in the darkness. Follow him. Follow him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, as we go to the Lord in prayer today, I call you to remember your brothers and sisters in Christ and those all around the world who are in this pandemic fighting to serve God even in these strange times. We're caught between joy and despair. We yearn for the fulfillment of God's desire beyond the brokenness and neediness of this life. And we offer thanksgiving for God's presence with us. And we offer these prayers to him now as we pray. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we bear witness to Matthew's gospel that says, The son of David, the prophet from Jesus The prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, Jesus the Christ, has come. He is entering the city, and we cry out, Hosanna. Save us, Lord, save us. Forgive us our sins as we have strayed from you. Forgive us as we look down or we hide in the darkness or we run from your word. Forgive us and help us to enter the procession afresh and anew. And help us not to cower as we approach the cross, but to walk with you. To journey through the cross. To be God's called out people. To be the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the world during this time. We pray for all the countries of the world and their leaders. We pray for our nation and its leaders. We pray that we would hear your call and faithfully serve. That the church of Jesus Christ would rise up and be who it is that you have called us to be. We pray for those who are sick and hurting. We pray for those who are oppressed. 
We pray for those who have no place to lie their head. And Lord, we pray that we would feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give water to the thirsty, and give living bread to those who hunger. For we know that your grace is sufficient for us to be who it is that you have called us to be. You are a God. You are our salvation. And we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, who indeed is our Lord, who came in your name and turned the way of rejection into the way of life. Grant us faith. Help us to enter those gates of righteousness so that we may receive your grace afresh and anew and be the citizens of your kingdom you have called us to be. Hear us as we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I'm so thankful for your faithfulness to God and his kingdom. And I'm thankful for the way that you, you give and continue to give. You are modeling God's generosity. And I pray that you would consider how it is that God is calling you to give today. Uh, we have some information to help you remember how to do that. We ask that you would go to our website, russellvillefirst.org, and click on the, the icon to give there. You can give through bank draft by calling the church office or mail your gifts. We are here to receive them and use them to continue the work of God's kingdom. For our Lord is indeed with us. Let us pray for our tithes and offerings. Holy God, sovereign power over pain, glorious and triumphant one who sends Jesus Christ in humility to transform all of the world. We enter this holy week bringing our tithes and our offerings to you and leaving them in the hope that you will send them to make the world a more loving and compassionate place. We are reminded through the scripture that you sent two of your disciples out to make the world ready for your coming. Remind us that your kingdom breaks into the world, not as a spectacle for us to witness, but as a parade where we are called to make a working contribution. We pray this in the name of the one who comes, not just for the parade, but for the cross at the end of it. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We would invite you at home, uh, wherever you are, to stand and to join us singing, bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together with love. speaking you today your pastors remain available to you you can call us at the church anytime and reach out to us we would love to pray for you we would love to encourage you our Lord is at work and using us in new and different ways we want to be a part of that don't run church don't hide follow him 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And all of God's people said, amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.